This episode of Storytellers is brought to you by these fine companies. I'm Mike Ashley, and you're watching Storytellers at CompetitionPlus.tv. The CompetitionPlus.tv. Basically, uh, before Dwayne Nichols came out with the United States Super Circuit, you were Mike Ashley driving a Thunderbird called Knockout. So tell me how did the, tell me the story of how you got into Dwayne Nichols' deal, and don't leave out the two eleven through the grass. Oh, uh, why does that always have to become the, <clears throat> the topic of every? Conversation, because that was epic. It, it was. It was epic. what Pro Mod was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was Rudy. the day I realized I didn't know what the hell I was doing. <laughs> Dwayne Nichols. So you know, like I always was infatuated with drag racing, and like there's not many people who race <clears throat> in New York, but you know, like John Placino uh, and, and John Nobio, those two guys, and we had a friend back then, Bobby Lasorda. Those guys were like the big like the badasses out here that you know you just you wanted to be like them and um so Bobby Lasorda had a car it was a it was a Thunderbird and it was it was just awesome and I love that car and uh so I bought it you know it was for sale and I bought it and kind of that was like my first real race car and it was like I used to just follow these guys literally Johnny John Placino now he's his son is Johnny but John was a great guy John Nobio they were kind of like my local heroes. I would follow them around and uh, kind of try and teach myself how to drive. Between them and Bobby Lasorto, um, you know, kind of I learned, I learned how to drive Alenco <clears throat> with that Thunderbird. Um, but then, you know, Scott Schafferhoff came on the scene and Gordy Hamil and, the, and, you know, the Over the Hill Gang. And all of a sudden, top sportsmen started to just explode, you know, with excitement. And, you know, when I heard about this, you know, new series, the United States Super Circuit, uh, Dwayne Nichols, you know, he was the one who was running it. And uh, I was like, man, I, w I want to run in that thing. So <clears throat> I ordered a Jerry Haas car, Scott Schafferoff engine. And back then the big thing was not one nitrous system, but two. You had to have the second system in order to run. And I, I was just like so excited, you know, you know, to run this thing. So <clears throat> we went, we ordered the car. And there's a couple of really good stories that are heartwarming for me. The first one was when I picked up the car at Jerry Haas's shop. So if anybody knows Jerry Haas, he's like the cleanest, neatest, like everything's like always perfect. So, you know, I just got done driving there and I'm tired and I go in there and there's my beautiful car. I was like, oh my God, it's a yellow car, blue straws. Like, I was so excited about it. And uh, Jerry's like, so what do you think? I said, you know, pretty cool. So he said, yeah, you know, you know, so we started it up there, right in his shop, and uh, <clears throat> you can ask Jerry, this is a true story, I am the one and only person who did a, I actually dropped the clutch on that thing and did a bird out in Jerry Austin's shop. I left two black marks in his perfectly clean, neat shop. You want to see a state of shock like Jerry's, this is Haas's face, he was like, with his glasses, like, like that, looking at me like that. And, and the chassis builders that were there were all looking at me. It was crazy. And so, anyways, I don't know, I'm just getting off topic for a second, but that's one of the funniest things because every time I go to Justin's races now and I see Jerry, he goes, you need to burn out my shop. I'm never going to forget you did it. And whoever he's walking with, he has to tell him, hey, that's Mike Ashley. He's the only guy who ever did a burnout in my shop. So, anyway, that car was a great car and I love that car. We really worked hard to get it to run well. We brought it home. Um, you know, Scott Schafferoff helped us with it, and we rented Akko, took it out, and really worked hard to get this thing to run good. And at the time to run good, you had to be running like in the mid to high 190s, uh, you know, speed wise. And you had to run like, you know, as close as you can to low 70s in order to be a good runner. And so we, we, could, we, were, like, we were like in left field. We, we, we were total like dummies. We didn't know what we were doing. We would take that car out there and just like, I drive the thing all over the racetrack, could not get it down the track, and finally we just we got some help. Scott helped us with it a little bit. <clears throat> we took it out to Akko, we rented Akko, 
And I'll never forget, thing went 729, like 197. I was like, all right, now we got something that we could race because it was kind of in the ballpark to where the other cars were. So I called Dwayne Nichols and, you know, I want to go and I, and I want to race this United States Super Circuit because the first race is this back-to-back -back thing. It's, it's all kind of hyped up and you, it's invitation only. And it's at, you know, Maryland uh, International Raceway first, Bud's Creek. And then it was, you drive, that was on a Saturday night. And then you drive, you know, overnight to English Town to run on Sunday. And I'm like, these are my home tracks and this is something I really wanted to do. And I'm like, man... So I called away Nichols, I tell him, hey, by the way, I ran, you know, 729, you know, 190. He's like, listen, you're not invited. We have enough cars. We don't need you. You know, blah, blah, blah. I was like, listen, you've got to let me. It's right down the road from my house. I got it's my home track. I got to be able to be there. He's like, look, I don't know how to tell you enough times. The answer is no. So I was like, you know what? F this guy. I said, I wrote, I wrote him a letter, and, I, and I, back then, was, there was no emails or anything, you know, unfortunately, I'm like a fossil at this stage, and uh, <clears throat> I faxed him this letter, and in this letter, I said, listen, I'm coming to those two races, and I'm going to run in the bracket classes, because they were running bracket cars, and I'm going to outrun all your show cars, Robbie Vandegrift, and Animal Jim Fura, and all the cars that were, Charlie Carver, all the guys that were showing up. I'm going to outrun those guys. Walter Henry, may he rest in peace, one of my great friends, great person. And these are all guys I have the highest respect for. But at the time, I was like, I'm going to outrun them, and I'm going to, you're going to be embarrassed that you didn't invite me to your show. So basically, I faxed him that letter, and let me tell you the response. Nothing. Didn't care. No response. Didn't send me anything. So I'm like, you know what? F this guy. I dragged my shit down to... To Bud's Creek, <clears throat> we unload in the bracket by the bracket cars. All these fancy top sportsman cars, you know. Then before it was pro modified, it was top sportsman. They're all parked in the show area. Everybody's freaking out, and I don't blame them because these cars are so like cool. Like Robbie Vandegrift's car for me, that, like he was my hero. I loved his car, and Walter Henry with his vet, and <clears throat> all these guys were just animal Jim. Like oh my god, what a character! Just amazing. And so I'm parked over there in the woods with, you know, the bracket cars. And, uh, you know, so I'm like, I don't care. I pull my car out and uh, those guys run the show. And, and, and actually Scott Shafroff was there with Gordy Emile. And uh, <clears throat> the first run, they go down the racetrack, those guys, you know, the show cars. You know, I was in the lanes, the bracket cars. The show cars go down the track and like, like Sha Shafroff's car burns to the ground. You know, Walter Henry kicks a rod. And these guys, all of a sudden, they're short. They can't, they don't have enough cars for the show. So uh, Dwayne Nichols, sure enough, comes walking over. He goes, oh, you know, I hate to do this, but, you know, we need a car. You got a shot if you want to be in the show. I'm like, oh, now you want to see if I want to be in the show, huh? So anyway, that was fun. And um, I actually got to be in the show. And to tell you the truth, I remember that night I went like 720 flat. I think I went to like the semifinals of that race. I went like 720 flat at like 198. And at the time, only one car had gone 200 miles an hour. And it was like a big deal to run 200 miles an hour. It was like one or two of went 200 miles an hour. And, I, and it was only six cars that would get into that 200 mile an hour club. And I really wanted to get in there. It was six or eight. I can't even remember, man. I'm getting so old. So anyways, <clears throat> it was like, wow. I went, I went to the semifinals. I just remember one thing about that night. I remember Brett Kepner, great announcer, great guy, and I remember him saying, well, when Mike Ashley pulled in here, the only people that stopped by his trailer were the ones who wanted to ask him, by the way, you know where the bathroom is located? They were just looking for directions to the bathroom. Now, everybody's crowded around his trailer, you know, um, looking at his car and talking to him. So that was pretty cool at Bud's Creek. So anyway... Went to semifinals, it was really exciting, and then, you know, Dwayne said, you know what, you want to run English Town? You can run English Town. I'm like, oh, that's amazing. So, we drove through the night, it was crazy, we ran with Barnstormers. We like, ran over there, it was like till like midnight, and then we packed all our up, drove up the road to English Town, no sleep. I still remember, we were just like, 
trying to get some sleep. We had like this dually with a, a you know, a little sleeper on the back. We sleep in the sleeper. It was like, who cares? Like, just awesome to be part of this like barnstorming USSC thing. And um, we get to English Town. It's like, well, you guys can have one test run, and then after that, you know, it's it's on. You got to race. So we're like, you know what? We'll take that test run. And now I got Shafroff over there helping me because his <laughs> burned to the ground. So it's like he's gonna come over and help me. So I was like, all right, it's good. So uh, he told me, listen, Mike, this car's running pretty good right now. <clears throat> when you, you know, you kind of knew with this, when you pull third gear, just hit that second system, and uh, and you should be able to run pretty good. And I'm like, all right. Sounds good to me, I don't know. So anyways, we want to make a test run. So we, we, we drag the thing up there, we pull it around. We go to make a test run. I leave the line, things all twisted up. You know, the door's ready to pop open. That's the way the cars were at that time. I pull second, pull third, you know, like going down the track. You know, I'm even thinking about the button. I'm like, what? forget the button. I'm trying to hold on for dear life with this thing. It was like crazy. And, uh, you know, I get to the finish line. And, you know, we didn't have radios and any of that stuff at that time, you know. And, uh, guys, everybody comes down. Everybody's all excited. I'm like, what's going on? They said, you went 205 miles an hour. I'm like, holy <laughs> 205. I'm in the 200 mile an hour club. It was like the most exciting thing. I was like so pumped. And then uh, <clears throat> we come around and Shafroff's there. And I can't wait to, like, get the race pack, you know, to take a look. We want to look at the race pack and see the computer. And, you know, back then it was like you had like four lines on the computer. That was about it. It wasn't like all this complicated stuff. Like, I look at what Mike Green looks at right now. He's like Elon Musk up there. Like, uh, looks like he's in, uh, you know, tuning a rocket. But um, this is like four lines. It showed you a few things. And, you know, we put it in there. We look at it. And, like, Shafroff's like, hey, you come here for a second. So I'm like, all right. So I walk into my trailer. He's like, you know, you hit that second system in second gear instead of third gear. I'm like, hey, because you're supposed to wait till third gear. I'm like, I oh, don't plugs look pretty good. Thing looks pretty good to me. Went 205 miles an hour. He goes, you're supposed to wait till third gear. Next time we're till third gear. I'm like, all right, all right, whatever. But I was all excited we went 205. Anyway, we come around for first round. And uh, <clears throat> we went first round. And it's crazy, you know. I come up to the starting line. We run first round. And just go down the track. And things like, oh, I mean, literally all over the racetrack. But this time it was still like, it still stayed on the track though. It's still all over the racetrack. And you know, I won first round, went 210 miles an hour. It's like first door slam and I ever go 210 miles an hour. I was like, holy, <laughs> that's amazing to come back. So Shafroff calls me in the trail. Hey Mike, come in here, I want to talk to you for a minute. I'm like, what's up? He goes, you hit that system in first gear. You're not supposed to hit the system in first gear. I'm like, I went 210 miles an hour, I won the round. Also went 702, almost, Six, you know, 99, almost into the sixes. People were trying to go into the sixes at that time. And I went, also, it's the fastest door slammer run in history. And the plugs look good. He's like, you can't hit the system in first gear. But you know what? I never listen to the crew chiefs. Uh, that's why I can't drive cars today, because I don't listen to the crew chief. I just listen to what my ass tells me. My ass told me, car felt good. Hit the button, I guess. I don't, that's what happened. It was just a natural thing. I would just, you know, like, put it in first. And as I was going through first, I hit the button and just, car would take off. Anyways, in the final round, I raced my my hero at that time was Robbie Van Grip. I just love this guy. And even to today, he's, he, he's just like salt to the earth, great guy. And um, came up against him in the final. I was like, holy shit, I'm in the final at English Town. This is Dwayne Nichols didn't even want to let me in. And I, I've got like media all over. Like back then it was magazines, like, you know, written magazines, like Hot Rod Magazine, all these people asking me for interviews. It's like, holy cow, I can't believe this. And I wound up winning the race. I went 7.02, 211 miles an hour, but I did not want to lose that race no matter what. And that thing was a handful. So of course, when it left the starting line, I hit the, I hit the second system again in first gear. And you know, back then it wasn't like now where you know everything's on, does the things itself. I had, you had to drive. So basically, I'm not saying you don't drive now, but you had to really drive and hit buttons and pull gears and it was a whole process. And that thing left, and when I hit that button, it, it twisted up, it like popped the door. We, we didn't have that latch that held the window shut like that. It like popped the door, and I was like, I looked over to the left, I'm like, oh, <laughs> when you look to the left, wherever you go, the car goes. Next thing I know, the car's like almost heading towards the grass. I'm like, I'm not losing this race, no matter what. And I don't know, people say it was in the grass. I don't think it was in the grass. I think it was more along the edge of the grass, although there were a few people that swear it was in the grass, but I didn't see any tape. I had to see the tape. 
But it was definitely close to the grass, and that thing came down, <clears throat> went, went, went through the finish line. I won the race and went 211.26 miles an hour. And um, it was like the fastest door slammer pass in the world. And it was just, it was amazing. Now I have to be reminded, not that I went 211, but that I did it through the grass every time I speak to somebody. So that, that's my story. After that, needless, you know, I don't think I need to say Dwayne Nichols was happy to have me at the USSC races. I was happy to be there. And it, it, I have to say it was probably, your ranks up there with some of the most fun times I've ever had in racing. We were like a bunch of barnstormers just going across the United States, track to track. You know, it was just, it was great. It was a lot of fun. I had a good time. So that's my story. Those of us in the media who witnessed that run felt like if you didn't make it as a, pro, as a top sportsman, quick eight, pro mod driver, you always had a career as one of those guys that drives around on the side of the road cutting grass. The way grass was flying <laughs> up. <laughs> it was, um, you know what? Listen, nothing stands in the way of the wheel.